Welcome to the No Face Show. That's great. So you know, now we kind of get to the present of Chris Kiss. What mm. what are you doing right now? Uh, what's what's where? Yeah, what are your plans maybe for this summer? Uh, you know, COVID has kind of been um, definitely something that artists have had to adapt to. So maybe tell us what you did to adapt to the COVID uh, to the COVID season and tell us the well, present for Chris Kiss. Well, I think a lot of producers and music people will relate to what I'm about to say. And it's like, we have been on, we, we're on lockdown all the time. You know what I mean? We're in, yeah. we're in studio <laughs> all the time. So, uh, so it didn't really make much of a difference to like how I was living my life necessarily. Um, Cause I was, I'm always in studio. Um, but yeah, man, it just gave me some time. I think it gave a lot of people time to reflect and, you know, look at their lives and really work out, who they are and what they want and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of it for me. Um, but yeah, I've basically just been continuing with uh, features, uh, feature vocals over various different DJ producers tracks. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm currently building a campaign for a solo release plan. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm very excited. I was going to ask, I was gonna ask you about that. So yeah, it's awesome that you, that you mentioned that. Yeah, it is so, gonna, it's going to be dance music, not not specifically house all the time, but it's going to be dance music. Um, and yeah, man, I've already got probably the first. I mean, I'm, I'm going to bring out singles to start with and then build up to an album, maybe. But um, awesome. yeah, I've already got like the first three or four singles. So awesome. And yeah. were you doing a lot of live shows? Uh, was that like something that affected you because of COVID a lot or? Not, uh, not really, no, because I wasn't I wasn't ever really doing much live stuff. Like I've done a few of the festivals, um, Tomorrowland and SW4 mm -hmm. in, in the UK and, um, you know, various different ones. But that's more um, as turning up for one of my friends, like, say, yeah. for, for example, I did an SW4 with uh, Fetty Legrand. Uh -huh. And I, that's not a paid gig i just ring them up and i'm like yo can i come through and perform the track and they're like yeah uh -huh. okay and then i just go so so that's i basically awesome. just force myself onto their shows <laughs> uh -huh. yeah now that we're into shows i mean we got two people in this uh, audience maybe more that i don't know about this max and chris you know they have played both they've both played in some of the biggest festivals so maybe you guys can share uh some of some of the insights how does it feel to be on that stage in front of that many people uh at least for me when i hear the, you know these stories it only it always gets me pumped up so maybe people oh, might want to hear how it feels just I to play, be on those I stages. played I played Tomorrowland uh, it's funny is when when I was doing all those big festivals uh those were just coming up like you know they were huge mm. but like I had like my dream was not like at the time Tomorrowland like my dream was to play uh Sensation White that was like the big one in Amsterdam yeah mm. and uh so I was like people are like yo are you excited about Tomorrowland? I'm like, man, forget about Tomorrowland. I need to play Sensation. <laughs> like when you're an artist and you're coming up, if like your dream is to play like at the best, like for example, I had I had a two two spot actually yeah two places. Uh, don't ask me why it was Brixton Academy mm. was like on my bucket list. Uh, uh, O2 Arena and uh, and to, and uh, Sensation White Amsterdam specifically, and I did all three of those. Uh, so after that, uh, when I did Tomorrowland main stage, it's weird. It wasn't like it didn't feel because like, it wasn't on my bucket list. It didn't feel like. Yeah. But now I see all the hype. They're like, holy shit, yeah. you played Tomorrowland, yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, Tomorrowland. So I think for a lot, and that's the same thing for the, a lot of artists, and I'm sure he, you know, Chris can relate it's like if you're like for example when i was growing up uh, my dream collaborations were not like uh, you know martin garrix you know what i mean it's like damn like i played with prodigy one time at creamfields mm -hmm. that was a big deal for me you know a lot yeah. of people are like oh prodigy wouldn't it be cooler to do a collaboration with marshmallow i'm like no no no, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> no i hear you man because like my two like once i started uh doing the house features and that from chocolate puma i was like i want to do tomorrowland and i want to do um brixton academy and i did uh, tomorrowland in belgium uh dressed as superman uh let me just oh. say <laughs> yeah it was on the super you and me stage um uh, we were yeah, yeah, we, yeah. yeah that's it yeah and we were gonna get a, a plane 
but my friends wanted to come so we decided oh let's get um let's get a car and drive to belgium yeah so i oh, got God. there with zero hours sleep i was oh running on God. about <laughs> yeah yeah literally i turned up 10 minutes before i was supposed to go on i had to throw on a superman outfit <laughs> and then <laughs> and jump in front of about 20,000 people like <laughs> superman drove why didn't you just fly bro yeah, I should have <laughs> fun with your <laughs> yeah but That's then uh, awesome. brixton academy as well um that was something I've always wanted to do because I've been to so many raves there. And then yeah. Steve Aoki, I think it was his last year, not last year, the year before, uh, Steve Aoki invited me to his headline set at Brixton Academy, man. Yeah. So that was... Sick. that was Brixton is special, man. Walking through those so walls intimate, in the back, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank what's you for that, sharing that inside. What, what's that spot uh, by... What is that spot that uh, everybody used to go to for the after party after Brixton, it's right next to it. That's very close. I think they're closed now. Yeah. It used to be like this super ratchety, like small ass Yeah, club. it's quite small. Yeah, yeah. I know I know yeah. what you mean. I can't remember what it's called though, but I know exactly what you mean. Oh, bro. It's I had, we dope, used man. to do Brixton and then we used to party at that spot until like 10 in the morning. Dude, yeah, it was yeah. wild. You <laughs> used to get like, people, people jumping on the decks left, yeah. right and center. London, dude, like back in the day, like in the, I mean, I don't know how the UK scene is now, but dude, like there was a period when, when that scene was insane. Like, like when mm. ministry was like sick, mm. you know, the parties at Brixton were sick. Like there was yeah, like that period. Yeah. Health and safety has yeah, come in and yeah. fucked everything up bro yeah yeah i remember like you you would come and then you, I, I remember i would always fly in and there would always be like you know we'd have grab we'd grab dinner and it's like yo guys eat those steaks because we're not gonna sleep until like 12 yeah. the next day you know what i mean <coughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah. funny man.